Rise and shine, rise and shine, good people. I trust you're doing safe and everything is looking good on your ends. Um, please allow me to be the part in your life that talks about the changes of the environment. I have to share this as a result of finding out of a progressive nature of what's happening to us, especially in the ocean, which is now directly affecting us here in Nairobi and also many other cities in town. So, first of all, I'd like to remind you that um, a situation happened where the coral reef, so the reef on the coastal line is like a lifeline. It's a lifeline for the fish and the biodiversity that lives beneath uh, the ocean. Now, given the rising and rising of the temperature of the entire world, the ocean seemed to have picked up so much heat that um, it rose beyond the temperature that we need it to be. And it's risen by at least maybe two degrees, one degree, I'm not too sure, but it might seem small. However, it has a cumulative scale, like when you, um, when you experiment with a wave, if you drop a pin, that wave expands gradually. So that one degree has affected all of us and the lifeline that we have in Kenya is now on a critical, um, um, on a critical, uh, whatever you wanna call it, but things are thick on that sides. And by this I mean, um, we are experiencing a mass global bleaching mass global bleaching is as a result of now the algae um, leaving the, the coral reef and therefore exposing it and therefore now it loses its color and becomes like white. It's supposed to have color. Coral reefs are supposed to have color but now due to bleaching or due to the high temperatures the things are cooking yeah for easy understanding. So they're being cooked and therefore what you see underwater is white coral. So this was the first indicator that something is going to happen. What that thing was is what we're experiencing now. Um, in terms of now, so much flooding. And then we just experienced a goddamn um, cyclone, which you've never thought was going to happen in Kenya. So we really have to appreciate this thing here. Yeah? Therefore, it really tells us that um, we really need to look back and figure out uh, what is it as a people that we need to collectively do to manage the situation from happening again. Okay, although we survived the cyclone, it doesn't mean that the thing just went. We are still getting the after effects, yeah, of that thing passing by. So we are yet to experience the impact <laughs> of this thing. However, um, we should be grateful that nature is giving us time you know things that happen progressively to allow us to be more prepared and figure out the best way forward we might never always know the right way however with more practice the better we get and the more prepared we are and the more we share information and that's why i want to share information the better we are prepared to deal with such a phenomena that we've never experienced before this affects our businesses, this could affect our food supplies, especially our food supplies, because if we have constant flooding, that means now our produce may not be as good as we expect it to be the next season. So we need to think ahead of such things, you know, and knowing that it's already happening at the moment, you know, how can we have a team and how do we talk to government or whoever is responsible to help us think forward of what's coming ahead? Okay, and I felt like this is something that I needed to share. So please feel free to engage me and uh, let's discuss for more about this topic. Bless.